if you're new to data engineering then the two best ways to learn data engineering is one to read some data engineering books in order to get some fundamental insight into what data engineering is and two to build some basic data pipelines in order to understand how data engineering works in the practical world as a beginner you might ask me what are some books that i can read in order to understand these fundamental concepts and there are so many tools out there how do i build my very first data pipeline without all the jargon well this video is the answer to both your questions in this video we will be building a data pipeline using airflow to pull amazon's data engineering books and store it in a relational database called postgres to build this pipeline you will not need to connect to any cloud service provider all the tools are open source you can execute this on your local machine so without any further ado let's get started building a data engineering pipeline usually consists of three steps extract transform and load this is usually referred to as etl in big data terminology extraction can happen from either an api a database or like in this case scraping some web data here we will be scraping amazon books from amazon's website once the data is secured this data is then cleaned or transformed in order to get data that is only relevant for our analysis after receiving the cleaned and transformed data this data is then loaded into a storage location storage location depends upon the data that is received if the data is structured then a relational database or a data warehouse may be an ideal storage location If the data is unstructured then data lakes object storage or no sql databases can be ideal solutions there is also an option of hybrid storage location which is a combined storage for structured and unstructured data in this case we will be loading our clean data into a relational database called postgres to run this pipeline without any manual intervention and on a schedule we will be needing a scheduler apache airflow It's a platform that allows you to manage and schedule complex workflows known as DAGs which is short for directed acyclic graphs. A DAG represents a series of tasks that have to be executed in a specific order. In order to run these DAGs there are several internal components that are needed. A scheduler which allows scheduling of DAGs, a web server to run the UI, a database to store the metadata and a couple of executors in order to run these DAGs. To manage all these internal components, we will be installing Airflow on a Docker container. Docker is a really powerful way that allows installation and running of multiple components in one location. Docker with Airflow simplifies our installation process and allows seamless management of workflows. If you want to learn more about Airflow and Docker, I would suggest to go about the documentation on both the websites. It is very detailed and comprehensive. Last but not the least, we'll be using Python as a primary programming language and SQL to write queries for our database. With that said, let's jump into the code. Okay, so the first step is to go to VS Code or any editor for that matter and create a virtual environment. So we do Python m when when and and we activate our virtual environment. After that, head over to Airflow. You have to scroll down to the curl command and paste it over here. click enter and after it's installed you'll see the docker compose yaml file appears on the screen then you just have to follow the next steps copy paste that click enter to see all these folders have been created click on the next one and then you say docker compose up airflow in it before you do that you have to ensure that docker is installed on your environment after you're able to install it then you you paste a command which is docker compose up airflow in it this will initialize airflow and basically activate all the components that we spoke of give that a few minutes yep now we see the web server airflow mark so now let's go to the web let's go to chrome and type uh, localhost 8080 we should be able to see airflow running over there okay so now we give the username which is airflow and password which is airflow we sign in and we see the dags all the dags the default dags that are already installed now we'll add pg admin which is a client to run postgres on our docker container we see that postgres is already the metadata database over here within services so we we'll, we just add another port which is 5342 
copy paste those details open a new terminal shut down the docker compose container and we're going to restart it now okay so i think there is some conflict i'll just try changing the container name for pg admin changing the name for the container and go to i'll open a new terminal and do docker compose yep this runs perfectly i see airflow is initializing again i'll wait to see the trigger activate yep the trigger has activated you should be able to log into pg admin on localhost 5050 the username should be admin at admin.com and password should be root here we'll have to add another server create a we'll create another server called uh, csdv and we'll go to connections to get the host name the username should be airflow and the password should be airflow and we get the host name from the docker container docker container ls this will give the id mm, the command for that i think was docker inspect and place the id scroll to the bottom and there it is you'll find the ip address copy it paste it that's it now you've connected to the postgres database here we have the postgres database which is a default database and also another airflow database here we create a new database called books let's call it amazon books uh keep everything else the same and save it you go to schemas you will see that there is a section for tables and we'll get to that later here then we go back to airflow and we add this connection that we've just created we go to connections let's call this books connection let's type postgres let's give the same host name the database name login credentials and database is amazon books login is airflow password is airflow and the port is 5432 let's save it you've successfully created a postgres connection from airflow so we've installed the airflow on docker we've installed postgres and pg admin on the same docker container now let's go on to our next step which is creating our very first dag what we intend to do over here is to create a dag which is nothing but a directed a cyclic graph so within this dag we'll be having tasks operators and hooks hooks allow connection from airflow to external databases in this case we'll be using a postgres hook in order to connect to the postgres database from the dag tasks are basically the functions in this case we have three functions fetch uh, the amazon books data which is the extract function clean and transform uh, clean the data which is a transform function and load the data to a postgres table which is the create a table and insert function operators allow us to perform these tasks we'll be using a python operator and a postgres operator dependencies are nothing but the hierarchy in which the tasks have to be performed so in this case firstly we'll have to fetch the data then clean it and then we have to load it let's start building our code from airflow import dag let's give a couple of default parameters which is nothing but owner owner is the user in this case airflow the start date number of retries and retry delay now let's declare our very first dag which is the name of the dag is going to be fetch and store amazon books the description is a simple dag to fetch book data from amazon and store it in postgres we've given a schedule which is one day we want this dag to run every day and we've also declared the default parameters on top let's save it and head to airflow go to dags look for fetch uh, amazon books maybe it'll take a while to refresh there we see it so this is the graph it doesn't have anything yet we have the code and other parameters so now that our dag is appearing on airflow let's build the task within the dag our first task is to fetch amazon books data so let's write a function for that i'm just going to go ahead and copy paste it and i'll explain to you what i'm actually doing in this for this i have combined the the extract and transform components so this code will this code which is get amazon books data will get amazon books information from the website and it will basically remove the duplicates and return it as a 
data frame. So if you see, I have the base URL. Uh, I'm also declaring the number of books. And then we have title. And let me just remove description. And we have title, author, price, and rating. I'm going to drop the duplicates after getting all the books information. And I'm going to return it. I'm going to push this for cross-communication. After fetching the book data, we use the Postgres hook in order to insert the book's data into the table. So we're using the Postgres hook. We'll be inserting the title, author, price, and rating into, into the books table on Postgres. Now let's call these functions within our task. So the first task is going to be the fetch book data task. We are calling our get Amazon books data function in the Python callable. And uh, we are giving a default argument of 50 books. Then we have the create table task, which is using a Postgres operator. This uses the books connection and creates a table on Postgres if it does not already exist. And the last task is uh, the insert book data task. This will be calling the insert book data into Postgres function. So those were the three tasks. Now we'll establish a dependency. So we want it to run in a sequential manner. First, we want to fetch the books data. Then we want to create a table if it doesn't already exist. And uh, then we want to use the insert book data task in the end. So we use a greater than sign to establish the dependency. We save this and you don't have to do anything. Just go to fetch and store Amazon books, refresh it. You'll see all the three tasks in the graph view. Click on the run button on the top. You should be able to see the metrics on the left and the stage in which each of the task is. Oh, that was quick. So you see that all of those are green. If you go to logs, you'll see that all three have been executed. Now let's see if, if we can actually see this data in Postgres. So we go to PG admin, close it. Let's refresh it. Go to Amazon books, tables, query tool, and say select all from books, from Amazon books. Run it. Was it books or Amazon books? Books. Okay. And there we have it. All the books information from the website is now in the table. So now you can use this table in order to conduct your own analysis on which book to buy. Let's just sort it for based on the price for now. So there we have it, a data pipeline that fetches Amazon data engineering books and loads it into a SQL table. Now you can use this information to conduct your own analysis on which books to buy. You can also take it up a notch by adding more variables like description, maybe even reviews for the books. You can also deploy this project on a cloud service such as an EC2 instance and keep this pipeline running even if your local machine isn't switched on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share and subscribe if you did. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.